News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. We've got Callie and Burleson and Pam and Richardson. But first, the last piece of sound from last night's town hall with Kamala Harris. Would uh, how how did she was it a disaster last night from what you've seen and what you're hearing tonight? And um, would she have been better off just not doing one? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Here is her doom and gloom. I feel like at the end of this, she should have done a Howard Dean scream. Ah! Here we go. Okay, hold on. Legitimate fear. Start over again, I apologize. Is a legitimate fear based on Donald Trump's words and actions that he will not obey an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. He himself has said he would terminate the Constitution of the United States and wants to earn your vote to stand again behind the seal of the President of the United States? No one standing behind the seal of the President of the United States of America should be in that position saying they want to terminate the Constitution of the United States. Ah! I mean, what the heck is she doing? Doom and gloom. Oogie boogie boogie boogie. Ah! Oogie boogie boogie. Ah! Kill! 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 Hell! Hellfire! Damnation! Ah! How, what a, is that a great closing message? You're all gonna die! He's Hitler! Hitler, uh, Hillary was, Hillary, uh, Hillary was saying, uh, uh, like an hour ago, I played it for you. She's like, uh, his rally at Madison Square Garden Sunday is just like a Hitler's rally in 1939. They had a Hitler rally in Times Square. <laughs> what is she doing? What is she talking about? This is great. He's going to kill you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. That's their closing message. Trump today, his said uh, his campaign said the last week and a half are going to be the closing messages. She broke it. I'll fix it. Which one's better? Oogie Boogie Boogie Hitler or she broke it. I'll fix it. Uh, here is the one piece of audio. Well, I already played it for you. Excuse me. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Uh, by 10 points. In a Wall Street Journal poll that just came out today, Trump has a solid edge in most cases when asked about the candidate's agendas and policies. Literally 10 points on the agenda and policies. Trump has more voters favorable by 10 points than unfavorable of his economic plan for the country. Harris is, um, I guess, underwater four points. Trump's up 10 points in that category. The overall poll at the general election were held today. Who would you vote for? Trump is now leading by two on Harris, a four-point flip since last month's survey for the WSJ. They found there's no motivational. There's a motivational challenge for black voters. Only 74% are going to vote for her compared to 83% of Biden's and 92 of uh, former President Hussein Obama. So she's lost almost uh, 20 points from Hussein Obama. Uh, and then also compared to 81 one white group uh, Trump's gonna got 81 percent of white voters a group on the whole that leans toward Trump and then the date best available who's who's the candidate best available to handle the economy he beats Harris by 12 points compared to eight points last month so he's literally gained four in one month his lead as best on immigration has grown to 15 points over Kamala compared to seven points last month so look at this he went up four points in the economy over Kamala and he went up uh, eight points over Kamala in immigration 23 percent of voters said it was their top issue that's bad for kamala and good for trump okay uh let's go to your call at 800-288-wbap is our number 800-288-9227 callie burleson hello let's go see you're on wbap hello hi i just wanted to say that i don't think she should have done that town hall at all it really just made her sound like she took all that time off and really gained nothing. She just kept hiding behind facts of, oh, she was just vice president. Biden was doing this. Or, oh, Trump did this. And she really just was hiding behind the facts and not saying anything. You know, um, you were saying it was like a net neutral, maybe. But to me, it was a, it hurt her. 
I don't even think it was neutral. I think her campaign, does that make sense? Like, because all her answers, you know, as you were saying, were not good. So it's like, I, I guess hiding would have been better. Yeah, she really just drew a blank on a lot of it and left yeah. with no answers and more of just beating around the bush of what could happen and what she could do, but she never really did. Yeah. Uh, Callie, I appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you. Pam Richardson, uh, you are on WBAP. What do you got? Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I was born and raised in Dallas. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that. So I'm a citizen. Excellent. Born and raised in Dallas. I'm in my mid-70s. And we make people show their proof of citizenship before they come on the air. Go ahead, please. Okay, we should be able to tell by my Texas. Yeah, you actually, you're you're quite you're a young lady. You're maybe one of the youngest. Uh, you look like you're in tw- your early twenties. Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, uh, when I was in the line to vote um, in Richardson on Tuesday, a lot of people were just chatting to pass the time because mm-hmm. it's such a long line, uh, as it was on Monday too. And I had to leave; it's too long. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we were chatting about uh, IDs and stuff because I brought my. Uh, regular voter ID, the registration, mm-hmm. and my license. And they said, well, you don't have to show that. You just show your license. That's all. Right. I, said, I bring it anyway. And right. I think everybody should have to bring it. And yes. so we started chatting about that, but I we got on the subject of having to go, when I got my license mm-hmm. renewed, in 2020 it expired. Well, COVID was going on. So they gave us an extension because of COVID. And so I ended up getting it when I felt comfortable going, which was the following March of 2021. When I was in that line and other people were nodding their heads, yeah, we had to do that too. They made us get out of line and go down to the government offices and get a certified copy of our birth certificate before we could renew our license. Even though we had our license right there that expired with our address that was still current. Wait, this was in, wait when you were in line to vote? You talked no, about it? No, when I was in line to renew my driver's license. Oh, just because you were talking tires. about it, they said you need to show it? Yeah. No, when when I'm talking about the fact that they make citizens who yeah. obviously were born here and have proof. I mean, we've had our license. I'm 70-something years old. And they said, well, you're going to have to go get a birth certificate copy. And we had more proof medicare cards all kinds of stuff because we were more or less arguing with them like why they wouldn't tell us why they just said you have to go get a copy certified copy of your birth certificate so they're more stringent on their own citizenry than they are the illegals it seems like interesting yeah um, i still mm -hmm. to this day do not know why but there were other people in the line that said yeah we had to do that too Well, you know, um, we're going to throw in this one right now with you. I got to roll, but I wanted to throw this in with you since we're going to move next into this. The Texas AG, uh, Paxton, is now threatening to sue Biden-Harris for not verifying citizenship of 450 potentially ineligible voters. And you're talking about the voter ID thing and, 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 you know, having to prove uh, citizenship or not. And for the voting, you uh, don't have to prove citizenship. And that's where he's asking because he's saying, and he even says in the story that came out today, he's not even saying they're, that most of the 450,000 are illegals. He's just saying is that we have no way to verify it. And, and, and one of the things I, I want to propose here and just see if you agree with this, um, that in order to be able to uh, vote um, in Texas, and I know you have to be careful because it's strict federal regulations on this for for the history of this country that, that things have happened but um which the democrats play up uh, like it's still happening in 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 mass or something uh, nowadays which is bs and and you know why don't we say you have to have a state id a driver license or a passport uh, all three of those have uh you have to have proof of citizenship and um, I, you know, I, I don't know if you can get on the voter rolls in Texas when you, when you register, if you can do proof of citizenship as well. I don't know if we do that or if it's lawful, but I would like to do do one of those ways. And I think from what I did research, it's hard to tell, but I think you can get a free state ID if you're indigent. You know, if you if you're below the poverty line, kind of a level thing or something from what it looks like. So there wouldn't even be a fee, is my understanding. And I think that there needs to be something um, that with it, with proof of citizenship. Uh, would you agree? No. <laughs> oh, you don't think you should have to prove citizenship to vote? Well, I think you 
should have to prove it, but I don't think we should be granting driver's licenses, number one, for illegal. We don't. We don't. You have to prove citizenship to get your driver license. You have to prove citizenship to get your Texas state ID. That's that's what I was saying. And then passport also tells what your citizenship is. You can't get a U.S. passport without having U.S. citizenship. Uh, I confirmed uh, a little while ago with uh, producer Garrett. So um, that's, I wish we would just say that plus your Texas voting card, whatever, you know, I I don't know what the federal regulations are, but I'd like to also prove citizenship for that too, because you can't vote. We don't, you know, I don't think we even have municipal elections that are allowed in in Texas without uh, being a citizen. We're not New York. We don't do that. We're not California. We don't do that. DC. We don't do this radical. Yeah. I guess I missed the memo about showing whatever so you can get a driver's license. Yeah, you, there's you, a lot of... It's true. You have to prove citizenship for your driver's license. I, we, I, I researched it because I wasn't sure either. I figured in Texas you would, but I, I, we looked it up. And for state card, state ID card for Texas, you know, it looks like a driver's license, but it's not, right? Those Texas state IDs. For that in, and a driver's license and a passport, it's proof of citizenship on all those. I, so, I, I believe there's a lot of illegals that do have a driver's license. So somebody's dropping the ball and they're getting a license. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't think they have a license. I think they're just driving. <laughs> I swear to well, you. They're you know what? Tired too, but I, the problem I think is I, I would love for our cops. People. We have a lot of cops and DMV people uh, that are listening. You know, we have a wide array of people listening, uh, and maybe mm-hmm. it's just people who have been hit by illegals. Most of us, uh, like maybe I would say half, between a quarter and half of all North Texans have been hit by an illegal with no insurance. My my former producer from 15 years ago, who I uh, dearly miss, and he's a friend. He's now an Arlington ISD teacher with his wife, and. Um, uh, he was saying he got hit by an illegal. I mean, it's very common here, as you know, and well, you know, with no with no insurance. So I yeah. think there's a lot of illegals we have on our streets driving without insurance and without a license. Well, I don't. I think I've been pushing and trying to get somebody in the government. But they won't listen to us. <clears throat> but I think E-Verify should be the law of the land. I don't think they should be rewarded with a job. And just come over here and get everything you want, a job, a driver's license, this, that. I think everything should be removed that is a magnet to draw them here. I agree. Because if, and then they would leave on their own, which is called attrition. You know? Yeah. The good news is if we if we put Kamala in office, they, they will be allowed in by about two and a half million a year for 10 million every four years. That's good news. I have a relative that worked at Parkland. She's not there anymore, but she was in the NICU. Yeah. That's where the oh. you know, new, neonatal Go, intensive care. Yeah. yeah. It's at Parkland's a county hospital. Yes. The illegals children that are born there, I'm afraid that Parkland's going to go belly up at some point Yes, because there's so many illegal births there. Anchor babies. And, yeah. yeah, they should overturn anchor baby citizenship. Well, I, I use the Dallas Morning News as numbers when about eight to ten years ago, um, maybe 12 years ago on the air, and I was quoting them regularly, and thankfully my memory uh, remembers this particular stat. 24, uh, now it's probably higher now, but as of between eight and 12 12 years ago or or 8 and 14 years ago when I did this and it was in the news 24 illegals are born a day at Parkland 24 yeah. illegals are a day mm-hmm. so it may end up being 28 or 35 right now a day that's how many it's illegals are born every day number. and then and, and then the, the democrats want to call them dreamers they're not dreamers they're illegals no. whose fa- yeah. whose family and if they if they if they want if they don't want families being torn apart fine your parents lied to you they deceived you you're an illegal Actually, that, that's not an anchor baby. That's an illegal. Get, they're not dreamers. Um, if you're born here, unfortunately, an anchor baby is a citizen. But the illegal should be told, you, you, you're you uh, you're too bad, so sad. You're not a dreamer. You're illegal. Get out of here. I got to roll, Pam. Uh, coming up next, we got Ray and Denton, plus your call. Do you want to find out if almost 500,000 potentially ineligible voters, including possible illegals, may be on our voter rolls right now? Are you okay with forcing these voters to prove citizenship in some way if the Harris-Biden administration won't let us check their uh, citizenship? Uh, that's what I want to ask you. Lines uh, quite partially open. Three lines open. 800-288-WBAP. That's coming up next at 1021 on WBAP. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Should folks have to prove that they are legally here, uh, citizenships to be able to vote 
in Texas, we're suing to get 500,000 of those, almost 500,000 of those people that might be illegals on our rolls. We don't know. Biden won't help us. That's why we're suing. Ray and Denton, WBAP. What do you got? Hello. Hello, Chris. I just know why that lady had to show her birth certificate and get a copy of it. Uh Uh-huh. Real ID for the airports. Ah, uh, yeah. You have to have a birth certificate to do it. But when I when I moved here 14 years ago, mm-hmm. and I had to get a new CDL, uh, I had to show my birth certificate then too. Okay, that's good. So a CDL yeah. should be another yeah. one. Yep, Texas is is pretty good about making sure that everybody's legal. Good. Well, I like to hear that. Excellent, my friend. And, of course, we checked your uh, uh, whether you were legal before we let you on. We, we make all people show ID and proof of citizenship. <laughs> appreciate your call. Thank you. You need work on your picture, sir. By the way, appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you. Don't get cocky. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Uh, coming up uh, next on the Chris Crock Show, oh, I've got a few uh, quick pieces on the illegal invasion. You know how uh, everybody, uh, the Democrats, even the governor, Democrat governor, Jared Polis said, oh, no, no, we don't have a trend at Agua in Aurora. That's a lie. There's a letter from November 2023 proving that they were there in this city. You're not going to believe this. It's ridiculous how much they are lying to us about trend at Agua. Uh, I'll, t- I'll give you the details on that next. And a few other little nuggets of how bad things are with the illegals. And then shaky hand Horrible messaging. A twofer from Bill Clinton that literally needs to, they got to yank him off the road. You can hear some stuff. You can go, oh my gosh, this guy's terrible for Kamala. It's great for us, though. You're going to hear that next at uh, 33 after the hour on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 933 800 9227 is our number. Real quickly, before we go to Bill Clinton, you're going to love it. He, uh, he is, This is the second and third thing that have been very, very bad for uh, Kamala, which I'm so happy. It's great to have him on there. I'm so gr- I swear to you, I'm so grateful. Hey, by the way, I'm getting more and more excited to interview uh, actor Robert Davi in the movie Reagan. He was in Goonies, Die Hard, and uh, my son was like, oh my gosh, he's in every Halo. Like the first one, the second one there, I think he, I don't know if he's in some Call of Duty, but my son is, by the way, um, producer Garrett too, you're a great gauge of this. Is Halo, Halo's not the one that's embarrassing and lame. What's that one that the little kids play that you're like, oh my gosh, you're like, it makes you cringe when they're like, oh, do you play this? And you're like, oh my, what's the one? Fortnite, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you laughed and then he said Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, that's a joke, obviously. Um, but Halo's a good one, right? Like, it's not a bad thing to be voiced in that. No, that's a that's a big one that that you have respect for, if you whether you played it or not. No. Okay, yeah, it's fallen off in recent. But like, it was the first one or two and three good. I don't know what this. They're, okay, they're some of the biggest ever. He voiced those two, like so that, that makes him relevant for the younger youngins. My son's twenty one. He's like, oh my gosh, you were Halo. Which one was he? And he kept hitting, clicking the button to see which one. But um, so that's pretty interesting how they do those things too, right? Anyways, um, if you you'll remember him, he was the villain. Remember? Do you remember the remember the? Do you remember Goonies? Did you see it? No. Oh my gosh. Okay, you did. Uh, uh, my newsman uh, didn't see it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, if yeah, we, most of us saw Goonies, and we will never forget the the mother, the villain, who's that grandma, the mother. You know, she looks like a man in the skirt. Remember her, the the the, the mother, and the, her two sons that were criminals. Um, and Chunk, I think Chunk was their son, her son too. Remember? <laughs> Anyways. Um, the pock face guy, the villain who's got a pock face, you, you, as soon as you see him, everybody knows who he is. My kid knew him. I know him. So he's one of those actors that's in like 20 really big movies as a bad guy. He, uh, he was a bad guy in Die Hard, too, I'm sure. There's nothing but bad guys he plays. So that's why you'll instantaneously recognize him. But he was in Reagan, and uh, I'm going to be watching Reagan this weekend. And I'm going to be interviewing him on, uh, I got the booked interview thing right. I'm looking at it right here. Somewhere around the, uh, 9 p.m. on, what day is that again? October 30th, Wednesday. So that's next Wednesday. So don't miss that. It's exciting. And I'm going to finally watch that. I'm sure you watch this. So we'll talk about it, too. Okay. Um, meantime, before we get to Bill Clinton, 
Well, let's do Bill Clinton. I don't want to rush that. Let's do that, and then I'll tell you the illegal stuff. There's some more great little illegal pieces that are bad for the, for them and get, good for us to get out. That are well, they're bad for the country and for us, but they're good for you to hear about how bad Kamala is and her uh, administration. But here's Bill Clinton. This is great. Remember the first one? He said that Lake and Riley would be alive if Kamala and Joe would have done background checks, better background checks, better screening on the their illegals. He literally said that. Yeah, Lake and Riley would be alive. In Georgia, at an appearance, a campaign appearance, he said, yeah, Lincoln Rally would be alive if, if they screened uh, these illegals better. He didn't say illegals, but that's what they are. And uh, so he's like, yeah, Kamala is and Joe are doing terribly at screening people. And then uh, that was a gem. Now his second and third gems are what you're going to, I'm going to play for you right now. Here they are, Bill Clinton. This was today on the campaign trail for her. Uh, while he's doing this, by the way, his left hand is shaking. I think that's Parkinson's. I, you know, I have a dear mentor and friend who has it, and it's starting to affect him in ways you can see or notice, and it hurts me very badly because I love him so much. Uh, but let me play this. Uh, but the thing is, if you're in public doing doing uh, stump speeches and you're starting to shake like that, it's a little bit like, ah, oh, Bill. And when you hear these things, it's amazing. He's helping us so much. Here's what he said today about Carrie Lake. Listen to this. You got a person that... Grew up under sometimes challenging circumstances who made something of his life running against someone who is physically attractive but believes that politics is a performance art. And where, like J.D. Vance, she has to be prostrate before the master. <laughs> Okay, so Bill Clinton's saying that Rick, uh, Ricky Lake, Carrie Lake is physically attractive. Um, I mean, could he have said this more artfully? Like, not mention that she's physically attractive, like he has desires for her? The mental picture of that is not good. Especially with a man saying that. And is this offensive to you if you're a woman or if you're a man? Do you think this could be offensive to women to say she's physically attractive? But, and is is it offensive in general? Like, to say that about somebody, you're attractive, but, and they're married and, and the woman's married and, you know, she has a husband. I mean, would it be okay to say that that uh, Hillary is attractive? Which I mean, she's the opposite, obviously, but like that she's unattractive. Or, you know, is that is that like normal to talk about somebody like like it's good that she's pretty? Uh, or she, pretty is, is even a better word to say. Like it's still not okay, but uh, when you're talking about a political candidate, attractive, that's bizarre, right? Um, you can say she's got she's got the looks for a candidate. She looks like a strong candidate, but she's not. You know what I mean? Talking about the attractiveness of somebody that's running against the person you're endorsing, to me, is a bad move. Um, and I'm not politically correct, but I don't want you saying that my wife is physically attractive. That's creepy. And I think for you to talk like that about her shows that you desire her sexually, but you, uh, you know, would like a you would be a hate sex thing that you're just it's really a twisted, th- like creepy, sick thing, I think almost. And maybe you're I'm reading too much into it. But how do you how do you react to this? And then uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. It just thinks makes you think of sexual desire. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And especially with his history with women and Jennifer Flowers and all these other ones. Um Eight hundred two eight eight WBAP is our number. Eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. So that's the second uh, assist for Trump on the campaign trail for uh, Bill Clinton. And then there's this one. Listen to this. But about forty five percent of the people think he can do no wrong, and they don't care if we save our democracy or not. So there is a sliver there that has to make up their mind, and to them. Kamala Harris just showed up. I mean, she was there as vice president. And what they think of her largely depends on what they think of President Biden. But she is extremely vulnerable, more vulnerable than she deserves to be, through crazy attacks. So they've been thinking, the Republicans, all this time, 
how can we go on the attack? She's extremely vulnerable. The candidate you're stumping for is vulnerable, comma, extremely vulnerable. That is number three. So one, Lake and Raleigh would be alive if it wasn't for Kamala and Joe not screening the illegals, if they would have screened the illegals properly while they let them all in. Two, she's uh, her. this woman here is physically attractive, yet uh, but is dot, 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 like, you know, he's attacking somebody while, while drooling over them. And three, Kamala, the candidate I'm stumping for, is vulnerable, comma, extremely vulnerable. If you were Kamala, would you yank this guy off the? Oh, I mean, off the campaign trail? Would you want him going out there? Would you, would you trust him to do this again tomorrow or tonight? As his left hand is shaking while he's talking. My gosh, I'm thinking of the, about this horrible envisionment of a poor President Carter lying like he's on a slat, slat, a slat board, like or he's lying on a dolly, and his mouth is agape wide open. He can't even close or open his mouth anymore. The poor man. And I mean that poorly, but it's like, what do you? It's like he might be better to just wheel him out and have a little sign up or something. It's like hey, this is bad with the Bill Clinton. I just can't believe this is horrible. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Um, yeah, it's just, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know about you, but uh, wow. Uh, also coming up next, this is uh, really scary. British advisor to Kamala Harris. Remember I told you she hired the leftist, extreme left labor party in, in Great Britain? She hired them. The lady who, what they did was they, uh, the the uh, leftist Labor Party uh, president, presidential candidate, he's a hardcore far leftist like Kamala. He he ran his campaign pretending he was a moderate. He hit it. And now that he's elected, he's, he's running their country of Great Britain, very leftist, uh, very, very leftist. So he lied and got the job and, and then operates like Kamala. Kamala loved their success and loved how they hid the leftism, the extreme leftism, and then did it after she won, they won. She wants that. So she flew in her his campaign guru and um, is using him. And they have three top objectives on what they want to do for Kamala once she wins the office. And number one is to, quote, kill Twitter. That literally is uh, what the memo says from this, these British people that, that Kamala is hiring. Quote, number one is kill Twitter. So that's what Kamala is going to do if you elect her. That literally is a document that was, uh, was uh, leaked to them. There's two other ones and the other two, there's top three, and the other two are horrifying too. But they're going to kill Twitter if Kamala wins. We're going to react to that, share that story. How does that make you feel? Uh, 800-288-WBAP. That's coming up next at uh, 46 after the hour. If you uh, are okay with that. Also, I forgot to tell you, as promised, right around right now, a Kamala witness that confirmed her McDonald's job. Wait till you hear who she is. You're going to laugh how untrustable, how untrustworthy this woman is. You're going to laugh the one person that claims they can confirm that Kamala worked at McDonald's. She just said that Kamala told her about it years ago. Wait till you hear what she does in her free time. It's a riot. Um, Yeah, she's in the tank for this. All that's next. Chris Croc Show at 1046 on News Talk 820 WBAP. And now on FM at 933, 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Woo-woo. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Well, well, well. Look at this. This is so great. Remember remember Kamala said she worked at McDonald's? McDonald's Corporation has says they don't have any records from the 80s, which do you believe the one of the largest Fortune 500 companies in the world doesn't have records from the 80s? No, they haven't. Number two, the Alameda, California store uh, has instructed all their employees to never talk to anybody, answer no questions to the media or anybody. Number three, the leftist leg humping, uh, comma leg humping Snopes has uh, has uh, researched this and trying to give Kamala a boost, and they literally say their 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 verdict is, well, they said we tried to contact uh, McDonald's, we tried to contact Kamala's campaign, and we tried to contact the Alameda California McDonald's, and none of them will respond to us. 
So their verdict is unproven. We have no idea if she ever worked at McDonald's. Trump has worked at McDonald's for 15 minutes longer than Kamala ever has or ever will. <laughs> it's true. Everybody's laughing his butt off. He's crying almost. Trump has worked 15 minutes longer than Kamala. In fact, you know how to look up my archives, Producer Garrett, too, right? Would you pull up the one where it's Trump saying 15 minutes? Just, just Google Trump. Or just search Trump 15 minutes or F15 MIN, and that'll do it. Uh, or even Trump 15, um, you know, one of those two. You'll, you'll find it right away and put throw it in my in my, my thing, which I, for some reason I can't look up things on my archives. I have, I'm like mentally crippled on this or something. I don't know. I always try, but I never do. I guess I'm just not that dude. Um, so check this out. There was one lady. There was one. One. Per- we have one witness. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one. One witness. One. It's like, remember the history of the world part two? We have 15, 15 commandments, and then one of the tablets falls. I, look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a strong Christian, but it's from comedy, it's comedy. And then and Moses goes, we have 10 from 10, 15. He goes, we have 10, 10 commandments. And that's Kabbalah. We have one, one witness. Look at all these witnesses. Here's the problem. Meet the New York Times source who claims this is the New York Times. Like, oh, no, we, we, got, we got one source. Check this out. Meet the one source who the Times claims Harris is late, mo- late mother. So not even she Kamala didn't tell her. Her late mother told her, oh, hey, my mom told me. Guess what she does? This is she, like, this lady who was Kamala's friend said her her mother told her her daughter worked at McDonald's. Oh my god! <laughs> this is secondhand information, third hand, third party. Guess what? With this this lady does though, she's a friend of Harris, and um, she says Donald Trump has claimed without evidence Mrs. Harris never worked at the fast food paper. Uh, the the New York Times said her campaign, and a friend said she did. Wanda Kagan, her close friend of hers, when they attended high school in Montreal at her her wealthy suburb. Guess what, though? The problem is uh, what the New York Times did not tell you, the Free Beacon reported, is Kagan is a full-throated Harris supporter who has appeared alongside the vice president at several campaign events. She also served as a surrogate for Kamala on television during the DNC. Dude, she does TV for them. She goes, she does, she appears on MSNBC. So she's a Kamala surrogate for the campaign on television. And you trust this woman? She's telling you to vote for Kamala. Oh, I swear, her mom told me. Her mom's dead, but oh, she told me. Really? Yeah, and make sure you vote for Kamala. Her mom told me before she died on her deathbed. Oh, <laughs> <coughs> Kamala, <coughs> McDonald's, <coughs> fries, <coughs> very, <coughs> very uh, hot. Dude. She's gone. She's gone. Right that down. The fries are hot. She was sweating. <laughs> Does this do it for you? Is it, is, is it now proven to you that she's a McDonald's? It's yeah. Yeah, that she worked at McDonald's. I think her mom, uh, her mom's friend got confused. Her mom was in her last moments, and she, her mom was on her deathbed dying, and she said, McDonald's, <laughs> fries, <laughs> greasy, <laughs> hot, no hairnet, code violation, Kamala, small business owner. <laughs> Sorry, it does. So what? It's in there? Here we go. What is this now? I forgot what I asked for. What did I ask for? I didn't, there, here is, this is Trump. This is it. This is Trump. He's a winner. Here we go. What is Brendan the Prior telling you about the people of Pennsylvania? You actually have worked at McDonald's now. Versus now I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Are you going to put this on your resume? I've never worked here.
What does Morgan the Friar tell you about the people of Pennsylvania? <laughs> You actually have worked at McDonald's now. Now I have worked at McDonald's. I worked for 15 minutes. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy, work there! You're getting ready for four, <laughs> four more years of this. But I, I mow my lawn. I'm out there just slaving in the hot sun all summer. And I get to listen to this guy doing this all day. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. Okay. Shh, I got to do a show here.